Hey guys, welcome back to part 18 of our multiplayer game with Node.js and Unity. Uh, today we're going to be starting work on some backend database stuff. So this is more just like a set up and go kind of video. Um, so we're going to be using MySQL. That's just what I'm more familiar with. If you want to use other ones like MongoDB or whatever, that's up to you guys. Um, when we get to the Node.js part, I'm sure there's a package for that stuff because uh, they come tightly uh, knit together uh, but yeah so if you guys are looking into learning how to put uh, maybe accounts or just storing different things for your game like user stats that sort of stuff i tables uh, yeah the databases solve all kind of problems um, so the first thing we're going to do is you guys are going to head over to wampserver.com you guys can just type in literally just like WAMP server and it'll come up. It's like the first one here. Uh, if you guys are on uh, uh, Mac or Linux, it's not going to be WAMP. The W stands for Windows. Uh, you're actually going to be looking for uh, either a, a, a MAMP or a LAMP. <laughs> Basically, we're installing an Apache server uh, to host our database. So here, Apache is a web server, MySQL is a database, PHP is server side scripting, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, so if you're if you're on Mac or Windows, you guys are gonna come just search WAMP for Mac, and you'll get this uh, AMPS one, and you guys can find uh, the Mac and Linux for you guys there. Uh, if you guys are on Windows though, you guys can come over to WAMP server. Uh, you can click here and click uh, start using WAMP server. You can just click download if you want. Uh, I'll take you to this page. Um, most likely, we're probably all on 64-bit now. I have only came across a few people that are actually on 32-bit. Uh, so you want to click uh, the 64-bit here. This thing is just telling you about the license, how it's like free to use, but like nothing goes across them sort of thing. Uh, so you're going to just hit download directly. It should take you to this little SourceForge website with some Domino's Pizza tabs. Wait for it to start downloading here. And then just choose a download spot. You're gonna hit save, download, and then just double click and install it like you normally would. Uh, once you guys are fully installed, uh, you'll most likely get an icon that looks similar to this uh, pink W. You might have to search WAMP as well. It'll come up as WAMP six, server 64. Uh, just double click that bad boy. It'll bring up a little like window it says uh, we need authorization on windows most likely and you're going to get this little green icon here in this bottom right um, if this is red or you don't see it then you have to double click every time you restart your computer you're going to have to restart this unless you have it set up to auto start uh, but green means she's all good um, we're not gonna we're not doing any this is local so we don't have to do like too much configuration but uh, we can just uh, left click onto this and you'll get uh, our different menus here. And it should install PHP my admin and PHP. We're not gonna be using PHP, but you should see like all this stuff. There might be different version numbers depending, it might be a little newer, but uh, you should probably at least be on these sort of numbers. And yeah, you have your start, your stop, your restart if you have to get everything going. Like I said, it shows you based on the color of the icon. And we're just going to kind of like open up localhost here. It's going to open up uh, a nice little page here. So there's a couple a couple things you can do. You can either just like left click on here, click PHP my admin, or you can click localhost, takes you to this localhost page, which is also should be 127001 as well. Uh, we're gonna click PHP my admin. So, like I said, you can do it through down here, or you can just type in localhost PHP my admin. Your username is gonna be root, and your password is gonna be blank. This is only your localhost stuff, so it's okay to have it like that. And like I said, we're gonna be using MySQL. Beautiful. Okay, so um, this is gonna look a little bit different. This has um, you're probably gonna have a lot less tables. If you guys are new to MySQL. Um, I'm only going to be kind of skimming the surface and kind of explaining things that we need to get going. 
Um, if you're really learn into like new to this, um, definitely look up the W3 school stuff uh, for SQL. Um, and it literally has all the different syntax and everything you'll need. Um, and you can even try it out on their website. And yeah, if you're just getting into MySQL or just SQL in the first place, just definitely go check out uh, that stuff. Um, so yeah, so we have our tables on our left. Uh, these are tables, or sorry, we have like our databases on the left. And inside our databases, we have tables. So. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click new. And we're just gonna call this sample underscore database. Uh, we're gonna use all lowercase, it's up to you. Most people just generally use lowercase. We'll hit create. Cool, so now we have this database that we're able to access. The first thing we're gonna do is create a table Let's call this, we're gonna be doing like a um, user login, so let's call this users. Number of columns, we'll say one or two. Give them two. Okay, so when you go to create a table, um, and there's a very handy thing here called dbdiagram.io. And dbdiagram.io is a way for people to visualize what the database looks like. So I can come into the database here and be like, oh yeah, I want an introvert, integer called ID. We're gonna say that's 11. Um, it's always gonna be defined because it's auto incremented and it's gonna be our primary key. And if you're new to SQL, you're like, uh, what, uh, what's going on here? Um, so if you need more of a visual, this definitely helps you in learning how to connect stuff. So definitely check it out. I, I tend to, uh, to, to mock my databases inside this now and then put it into SQL. Sometimes I just go straight in SQL. Okay. So let's kind of talk this over if you're new to SQL. So, um, each table has a primary key and that's kind of a unique identifier in order to like tell each row or each entry that it's different. All right. Um, in most cases, it is much easier to have an ID number uh, that gets incremented. So auto increment as your primary key. So if you want to connect tables, it's much easier to do integer than it is to do like a string. Um, so typically I'll have the integer as the first one, and I'll call it ID or something. And then the second one will be username. Uh, we're gonna, so you have a different, you have a bunch of types here. Like I said, if you're new, most of them you're gonna be doing is like integers, bar chars, maybe some dates. Uh, as you get going, You'll probably start using booleans. Maybe if you're trying to be very conscious, you'll do like different kind of hints here. Maybe some blobs. Uh, it's really up to you. We're gonna use a bar chart. Uh, we're gonna say that the character is 25 here. And this can be defined as not null. So you always have to apply it. And yeah, we're gonna say that. We're gonna say safe. And you're going to see a little table here gets created for us called users. And inside of structures here, you'll see that there's an ID and a username. And we don't really have any data, right? So nothing pops up. So let's talk about inserting really quick. So if you go to insert here, don't worry about the value. We'll call this Alex. And it's going to run an SQL statement. You're going to say go. And now if I go back to users, you're going to see, oh, I hit, I hit, I ran this, the statement twice. So when I hit, when you hit go here, it runs the statement. And then I ran the statement again when I hit SQL. Uh, but now we have two users, uh, both named Alex, one and their IDs are different. Uh, let's go ahead and create one called Bob. Okay. We won't hit go this time. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now we have uh, a three here, 
and you can go ahead you can like you can edit them if you want like you don't really want to like spend too much time in the ph primary admin like this is very much an admin panel um very testing of like queries and stuff so one of the strong things for databases is queries and so you have sql so if we select all from users where one so let's just say uh, select all from users. Uh, so selecting all from users, so that's what the, the asterisk here is saying, select all. Um, it's gonna bring back every row. Uh, let's try a different one. So we're gonna say select all from users where username is equal to Alex. So it should just bring back the two rows that are named Alex here. That's cool. Um, another example is select ID from users where username is equal to Bob. And it'll bring back a three. So you can see like how powerful it is. Uh, being able to pull searches back, being able to log people in, be able to bring their stats and apply stats and that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, that's basically your main functions are like your create, your delete, your update, and your get. So the four, also known as crud. And yeah, so we'll be kind of doing that through Node.js into the back end and kind of playing with this a little bit more. Um, if you guys get really stuck or you're running into errors, feel free to join the Discord. Uh, I'll try my best. Uh, like I said, I, I used to use this for my last job, but a lot of this is just knowledge that I've kind of gained throughout the years. And uh, honestly, f schooling was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, so I'll try my best if you guys get stuck, especially with queries and stuff. But uh, if you really are getting stuck with queries, honestly, check out the W3 schools. I, I pop this thing open all the freaking time. <laughs> uh, it, it literally has everything. It, it's like, it literally knows how to create a table, drop tables. Like, there's a ton of functionality you can do uh, besides me just going over the basic stuff. But in terms of like our game knowledge, we just kind of need to know how to create tables, organize their data properly, and be able to like pull from all these tables in order to have our game work. And uh, yeah, hopefully that works. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand. Hit subscribe, please. Share that stuff. Share part one. Give it a share. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time where we'll start hooking up uh, this little guy here into our Node.js backend. As always, have a good one. Hey guys, I just wanted to make sure that I give a nice shout out to all my patrons over on Patreon. <laughs> Uh, they're going to be in the following list for you. Arthur Zhang. ARVR2020. Timothy McCoon. Chris Jarosko. Hey everyone, if you guys liked the video, make sure you guys click that subscribe button, give it a like, and make sure to comment. It really helps out. And if you guys are looking to support the project further, I also have my Patreon, which will be linked in the description down below. Thank you, and have a good day.